everyone. So, let us continue our uh, yesterday's discussion on carbohydrates. Today, we are going to continue with the oligosaccharides. And uh, just to recall what we have discussed in our previous class, we have uh, seen what are carbohydrates and then we have also seen the classification of carbohydrates into mono, oligo and polysaccharides. Then we discussed about uh, monosaccharides, a uh, few examples. We have seen uh, glucose, uh, fructose, okay. Uh, and uh, today we will uh, continue our discussion on the next class of uh, carbohydrates that is oligosaccharides. Now what is a oligosaccharide? Oligo means few, saccharous means sugar. So oligosaccharide means it is a type of carbohydrate which is formed of few sugar units or few monosaccharide units. And how many? How many saccharide units form an oligosaccharide? These number of monosaccharide units that form oligosaccharide can range from 2 to 10 molecules. Okay. And they are named accordingly. Now most of the times all these uh, 10 uh, monosaccharide units might be only one type of monosaccharide or sometimes it is more than one type of monosaccharide unit might be present. Okay. Now the next question is how these oligosaccharides are formed? They are formed by a special kind of bond called as glycosidic linkage. Okay, so glycosidic linkage. Now, what is this glycosidic linkage? Now, these glycosidic linkages are, see here in the picture you can see, which have taken from uh, Leninger's biochemistry book. So, here you see that there is, a, there, these are two uh, alpha D glucose molecules. Uh, because of some technical error, I am unable to use the cursor here. So, you see, there is alpha D glucose and there is a beta D glucose. Okay, so two glucose molecules are present and you see there is a OH group here and another OH group here. Now what happens during glycosidic linkage formation, these two OH group are undergoing a process called as condensation. What is condensation? Condensation is process of removing a molecule of water. Okay, condensing a molecule of water undergoes, I mean it condenses. So, across these bond, one OH from alpha D glucose and H from beta D glucose will be used to make a molecule of water that is removed from here. So, now what happens this oxygen, okay, the oxygen here will form a bond with here so that you are going to see, see this is acetal ring they call it. So, now here you see there is a bond. This bond the oxygen bridge that is present between alpha D glucose and the beta D glucose is called a glycosidic linkage. So, a glycosidic linkage remember it is not specific of um, only uh, carbohydrates anywhere if it is present I mean not only here in maltose or in uh, uh, sucrose anywhere when the condensation occur a molecule of uh, um, oxy, I mean water will be removed from the uh, across the bond uh, there will be a bond formed and if, if it happens in carbohydrates it is a glycosidic linkage if it occurs between uh, two acids it, you call it as a ester bond isn't it. So, here it is a glycosidic linkage. So, how to define a glycosidic linkage? A glycosidic linkage is the one a type of bond formed by the condensation of molecule of water between two monosaccharide units. Okay. I will repeat the definition of glycosidic linkage. A glycosidic linkage is the one that is formed by the condensation of molecule of water between two monosaccharide units. So, this bond is called as glycosidic linkage. Remember. And opposite of this is called hydrolysis. Okay, hydrolysis. So remember the definition, monosaccharides are simple sugars that cannot be further broken down by hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is, see when the bond is formed, it is formed by the condensation of molecule of water. If you add the same water molecule here, okay, across this bond, these two are going to be separated. Okay, so they will be separated, see here, 
water molecule is added. So, when this water molecule is added across the bond, you are going to see separate glucose molecules. So, hydrolysis is opposite of condensation reaction. Okay. I will repeat a glycosidic linkage is formed when a molecule of water is eliminated between two monosaccharide units and throughout this chapter we are going to use the glycosidic linkages. You can also name those glycosidic linkages based on the type of carbon atom that is uh, involved in it. Okay. So, a uh, 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 oligosaccharide is formed by the condensation of molecule of water between two monosaccharide units. If it is formed by two such monosaccharide unit, it is called as a disaccharide. Okay, if it is formed by three, then trisaccharide. If it is formed by four, then tetrasaccharide. Now, let us see the examples for disaccharides. It includes sucrose, lactose and maltose. Similarly, trisaccharide formed of three monosaccharide unit is raffinose and rabinose and so on. Okay. And now, I will repeat it once again, oligosaccharides are sugar units formed by two, two or more monosaccharide units and they are connected by glycosidic linkages. Okay. Based on number of monosaccharide units present, they can be classified as di, tri, tetra, etc. Okay. Now, here you are seeing on the screen is this, this has two sugar units, okay, glucose and glucose. Since there are two sugar units, this is a disaccharide. If you add one more here, it becomes a trisaccharide. One more here, it becomes a tetrasaccharide, okay. So, let us see one by one the biological significances. We will see the examples with their, with their significance. First one is lactose. Now, this lactose is also called as a milk sugar. It is present abundantly in milk. Okay. So, that is why they name lactose and it is formed by glucose and glu uh, galactose. Okay. Maltose is formed by glucose and glucose. Lactose is formed by glucose and a, a molecule of galactose. That means on hydrolysis, it will uh, yield one molecule of uh, glucose and another molecule of galactose. So, here what we are seeing on this screen is the structure of a lactose. Okay. A glucose molecule when combines with the galactose molecule, see this is the galact this is galactose, this is glucose. Now, the difference between glucose and galactose is, so in this position galactose will have OH below the ring and glucose will have above the ring. That is the difference. Both of these are isomers. Okay, but the OH group is present above the ring in glucose and below the ring in case of galactose. Now, uh, glycosidic linkage is formed here. See, you see here, Glu uh, glycosidic linkage is formed here between this uh, galactose molecule and a uh, glucose molecule, and thus you get to uh, a molecule of lactose. So, lactose is a disaccharide formed by a molecule of glucose and a molecule of galactose by a condensation reaction connected by a glycosidic linkage. Okay. So, that is lactose. Remember, it is a milk sugar. May be useful for your competitive exam also. Now, what is the use of this uh, lactose? So, this lactose, it is I said milk sugar. So, when you drink milk, you are going to get this lactose. Okay. And what happens is that after digestion, okay, uh, recall what you have studied in your uh, third semester, digestion of carbohydrate. Lactase is the enzyme that will break this uh, lactose, okay, into glucose and galactose and then this, both these will be absorbed in the, in your intestine, then it goes to the cells, it will be circulated and it will, it will go to the target cells. There this glucose and, uh, will be used to get the energy galactose will be anyway transferred. So, glucose is the source of energy and this glucose ca can come from different sources uh, through, I mean uh, in our uh, food. So, one of the such source of glucose to you is the 
this particular lactose. So, in a way it is supplying your glucose need uh, of a particular day. Okay. Next one is sucrose. So, this is a common uh, commonly found in cane sugar. Not only that sucrose is found in wide range of uh, sweet naturally occurring sweet items in fruits and all. Okay. It is also a disaccharide formed of a glucose and a fructose. See here monosaccharide units are different. In lactose also we have seen one is glucose, the other one is galactose. Here one is glucose, the other one is fructose. Okay. So, on hydrolysis again it is going to lead glucose and fructose only and what is its use? Once again it is used as a source of energy because you are going to see glucose okay, formation and then fructose. So, both of these can be used in uh, energy production. We have seen in our previous class fructose can be an alternative source of energy, isn't it? So, sucrose when you are eating sugar you are going to get a large amount of glucose plus equal amount of fructose which can be either can used in uh, glycolysis to get the energy or can be used in different pathways uh, like in gluconeogenesis. Now seeing the structure of the sucrose you see here each sucrose is formed of molecule of a glucose and a molecule of fructose and then See this is the site where glycosidic linkage will be formed. Uh, so, a molecule of water is condensed here resulting in a glycosidic bond between a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule resulting in the formation of sucrose. Okay, so, this is the structure of sucrose molecule. Remember, sucrose is formed of a molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose and this is again a source of energy to the body. Now moving on to the maltose, so maltose is commonly known as a malt sugar okay? and uh, it is usually present high in rich in uh, germinating seeds. So when you are eating germinating seed you are going to get ab abundant of uh, maltose and this is formed of uh, uh, two molecules of glucose units again it is a source of energy because anyway you are going to get double the number of glucose molecules when you are e consuming something with the maltose. Okay. Now, the structure we have we are already familiar I hope because you can see here there is a glucose molecule and there is a second glucose molecule and a glycosidic linkage is formed between these two glucose units. Okay. So, uh, maltose is formed of two glucose units and a rich source of energy. Okay. Now, uh, that is about the oligosaccharides. Let us move on to polysaccharides. So, these polysaccharides as the name is itself says poly means many, saccharide means sugar. So, polysaccharide means any carbohydrate that is formed of more than 10, okay, more than 10 uh, monosaccharide units and this number might vary from any 10, 100 to 1000 molecules of monosaccharides. Uh, recall the concept of polymers. What are polymers? Polymers are the chains of monomer units. They are the repetitive structures of monomers, isn't it? So, it is a series of monomer unit that is joined to form a polymer. A polysaccharide is a such a, a polymer, okay. It is a polymer of monosaccharide where the monomer is a monosaccharide. Do not get confused. Let us when you are seeing the example you will understand it better. But remember polysaccharide is a carbohydrate formed of number of car monosaccharide units. Okay. And remember again they are all connected by which bond? Glycosidic bond. What is glycosidic bond? A bond that is formed by condensation of a molecule of water. Okay. Now, uh, these polysaccharides are also called as glycans, okay, they are also called as glycans and based on the type of monosaccharide unit that is present, there can be two types of uh, polysaccharides, one is homopolysaccharide, the other one is heteropolysaccharide, okay. Now, what are these homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides? Homopolysaccharides 
Uh, they contain homosimilar saccharide sugar. So that means homopolysaccharides are those polysaccharides which have a single type of monomer, okay, which, which, is a, which is formed of single type of monomer, okay, there will be only one type of monomer, uh, that is why they name homopolysaccharide, okay, and examples are starch, glycogen. And in addition to that, there are also cellulose and chitin. And about these and the rest of the polysaccharide, we will discuss in our next.